Good morning and welcome to Broadmeadow United Methodist Church. Here at Broadmeadow, no matter where you come from or your vote, what you believe or doubt, what you are feeling or not feeling, what you have or don't have, and no matter who you love, all of who you are is welcome to the community of faith by God who loves you passionately. Thanks be to God. Hymn of praise is number 117, O God, our help in ages past. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Please rise in body or in spirit as we sing together.
Almighty God, speak your word to us and guide our feet, that we might be hearers and doers of your word. Amen. And our Old Testament lesson is Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, Thou art my Lord, I have no good beside thee. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the majestic ones, in whom is all my blood. Sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I shall not pour out their libations of blood, nor shall I take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my portion of my inheritance in my cup. Thou dost support my life. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will not dwell securely, for thou wilt not abandon my soul to shield. Neither wilt thou allow thy Holy One to undergo decay. Thou wilt make known to me the path of life, the presence of the peacefulness of joy. Thy right hand, there are there. There are pleasures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Our hymn is number 529, How Firm a Foundation. Disciples said to him, Teacher, 
look, what awesome stones and buildings. Jesus responded, you see these enormous buildings? Not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives across from the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? What sign will show us that all these things are about to come to an end? Jesus said, watch out that no one deceives you. Many people will come in my name saying, I'm the one. They will deceive many people. When you hear of wars and reports of wars, don't be alarmed. These things must happen, but this isn't the end yet. Nations and kingdoms will fight against each other, and there will be earthquakes and famines in all sorts of places. These things are just the beginning of the sufferings associated with the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and indeed the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Sometimes I think God has a a, a weird sense of humor. Um, so today's sermon is kind of built around the idea that um, that you know we we tend to look for the worst, uh, and and part of being a disciple. I'm I'm giving away the ending, by the way. Uh, part of being a disciple is to kind of train ourselves not just to look for the worst, but to but to expect God's presence, uh, to expect God to, to bring good things out of bad. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that, I do. And uh, But here I am up here, and if I seem a little disorganized, and I seem a little out of sorts, it's because I am this week. I mean, I told you last week, right, that, that Paige has been sick, and she's on the mend, but still, but still um, not doing great. She's had a few more tests run, and we think she's kind of over the hump and, and getting uh, getting better. I mean, she is getting better, um, thankfully. And I appreciate uh, all of your prayers. Of course, uh, that meant that, that Thursday, or Wednesday night, Thursday, Julian came down with an ear infection. And so we had uh, to keep her home. And, um, and today, Paige was supposed to go preach uh, about an hour and a half south of Jackson made it just outside the city, and the car broke down. And so, uh, don't worry, somebody is going to get her. I haven't just left her uh, at a gas station uh, outside of Jackson. But, um, but it's, it, you know, it's kind of, it, it would be easy for me, and this is not the worst thing that has happened to anybody in the history of ever. I get that. Um, but, but, you know, it's, a, it's been a lot of, it's been a big week. It's been a lot of things happening, and not all of them positive. And uh, it would be easy to be really negative about that. And um, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm, I'm not tempted to be. But, um, but the, the, it, it just it reminds me, right? It, it brings to mind for me, have you ever noticed that if, if a movie wants to win like an award for best picture, it had better be a drama. It needs to be sad. Right? Like sad movies win awards. The sadder the better. A comedy, a comedy is never called Oscar bait. And it's like we instinctively believe that if something is depressing or tragic, it's more real than something that makes us laugh or makes us smile. I mean, how often do we get nervous when things are going quote unquote too well? as if the worst thing that we can think of is the default. Well, things are going well, which means it's going to really crash and burn soon. Rarely do we go the other way around, right? Well, things are going terribly. It'll get better. And that Jesus, Jesus seems like he's, he's doing that at the beginning of the Gospel today. Mark 13 begins what's called the little apocalypse in, in kind of biblical studies circles. Jesus is in Jerusalem. He is preparing for his crucifixion. He's getting ready for what is to come. And as he does so, he starts to kind of let his disciples know 
that they are going to face trials. Let the church in the future know that they are going to face, that we are going to face trials. It's called the little apocalypse because much like Revelation and and other apocalyptic literature in Scripture, what it does is it takes what's going on in the world and it gives it eternal, and cosmic, and divine significance. That's what an apocalypse is. Things happening on earth have eternal significance. And it begins with his disciples awed by the temple in Jerusalem. The, the center of the worship of God in the world. The temple is not the first temple, it's, it's really kind of the third temple. The first one was built by, by Solomon and was destroyed when Jerusalem was taken by the Babylonians. And they were carted off into exile. The second one they built when they came back, but it was... It, scripture says the people wept because it wasn't what it used to be. Well, the third one is the one that Herod the Roman client king of Judea, he tears down the old temple and he rebuilds this spectacular, beautiful, giant, amazing new one. One that is supposed to overawe anyone who comes to see it. And from all the reports, it was, quite frankly, one of the wonders of the world. Giant, elaborate, gold-studded temple. And Jesus' Jesus's disciples, who were just kind of fishermen and, and laborers from out in the country, can't help but be amazed and awed by this thing. This, this is, a, this is a, a building that will last forever. It has to look at it. Look at it. How could anything ever happen to this? This is the center of worship of God. God wouldn't let anything happen to this thing. I can't imagine anything. What do you think about it, Jesus? What what awesome stones and buildings in this this city and and, in this temple. What What an amazing place. And Jesus responds, yeah, but um, it's going to be torn down. It's going to be torn down to the point where there won't even be a stone left on another stone. It's, um, it's, it's going to go. And pretty soon. Well, this seems kind of doom and gloom to the disciples, and I don't blame them. It does. It seems a little bit doom and gloom. This is terrible news. If the temple is destroyed, what will we as a people do? The disciples are basically thinking to themselves. If the temple is destroyed, how will we worship God? If the temple is destroyed, how will we know God is with us? If the temple is destroyed, that means we will be destroyed. This, this, is, a, this is a tragedy. You're You're really bringing us down here, Jesus. So, okay, when is it going to happen? When will this happen? What do we need to be looking for? What signs do we need to look for to show us that this, this this will be happening? We want to be on the lookout. We want to know the future, and we, we want to know the bad things that are going to happen and when they're going to happen. You started it, Jesus. You need to tell us. Jesus never answers a question. Not really. What do we need to be looking for? And Jesus says, well, if you want to know what to look for, there will be people who come, and they will claim to speak for God, but they don't. There will be wars that break out. Nations will fight nations. There will be earthquakes and there will be famines. 
Jesus might as well have said, you will know this is going to happen because the sun comes up in the morning and sets at night. There are always wars and reports of wars. There are always famine. There are always earthquakes. There are always those who claim to speak for God but really don't. If you want to know what to be on the lookout for, if you want to know when to start paying attention, Jesus says, basically, pay attention right now. Sure, it's natural to want to know when tragedy will strike. It's natural to want to know what's going to be happening. But that, Jesus is pointing out to his disciples, that's not the point. These things, these wars and rumors of war, these famines, these earthquakes, these false teachers, these, these disasters that happen constantly. These things are not the end. They're, they're just the beginning. What's happening is you are seeing the birth pangs, as other translations say it. You are seeing the birth pangs of a new world. Of the ushering in of the kingdom of God. Jesus doesn't deny tragedy or hardships. Those things are reality. Those things happen. They are reality. But they're not the ultimate reality. Jesus tells his disciples, do not keep your eyes open. Only for the bad things. Only for the hardships. Only for the tragedies. That's it. That's easy. It's easy to see what's wrong. And you should. You should see what's wrong. You should know what has gone wrong so that you can be part of the solution to it. Yes, absolutely. Don't ignore the reality of what's going wrong in the world. But it is easy to see what's wrong. Right? It's easy. It's easy to be critical. It's easy to complain. It's easy to do those things. And I'm not, again, saying that they're bad. I'm just saying it's easy. And we can get so caught up in it that we don't watch for the new world that God is bringing forth. That we miss what God is doing. Jesus says what you need to be doing is keep your eyes open or how God is working in the world right now. And this, you see, is a complete change in perspective. Instead of saying, well, if, if things are going well, bad things must be coming. Jesus flips the script. He says, if it's the worst thing, it's not the end. If it's the worst thing, it's not the end. Something better is coming. Instead of ending in despair, end in hope. That doesn't mean everything is good. It just simply means that God is not done. If everything seems to be falling apart, God is not done. And sometimes things have to be torn down for something new to be built. Again, do not hear me call for toxic positivity here. We don't need to pretend like everything is great no matter how bad it gets. We don't need to ignore anything negative that comes our way and just put on a fake smile and say, no, everything's okay. That's not true. We have to tell the whole story of our lives, of our society. We have to tell the whole story no matter what, whether it's about history, racism, injustice, or even the darker sides of our own lives. We have to tell the whole story. We have to be willing to offer God our whole selves because God transforms only what we give to God. 
God transforms us only when we face what we need to face in our lives, in our culture, in our nation. We cannot solve our problems unless we admit that they're true. But, but if all we look for is apocalypse, if all we look for is destruction, if all we look for is tragedy, then that's all we will see. If all we expect is the worst, then we will lose hope. Because all we see is the worst. Jesus reminds us here that God continues to birth a better world. We will experience hardships and trials. Absolutely we will. Serving God, being a disciple of Jesus Christ does not does not prevent those things. All of the things that we depend on that aren't God, they will let us down eventually. But the worst, the worst is never the end. The worst is never the end. We trust that in the end, God brings about something new. And part of what it means to be a disciple is keeping, is learning the discipline of keeping our eyes and our hearts open for what God is doing. Not just for how things have gone wrong, but for how God is making things right. We are always, we are always going through an apocalypse. Whether it is privately just a little falling apart in our own lives or if the world seems to be on fire around us, we are always going through an apocalypse. But it's never the end. It's never the last word. That's never how things resolve. We're always going through an apocalypse, but God is going through it with us. God is walking us through it, and God is there at the other end. Bringing about new life, new joy. If we know nothing else, we know this. That God is with us. Even now, whatever you're going through, God is with you. Even now. And this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are so blessed to be able to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, in your mercy, you hear our cries and know the hidden desires of our hearts. You answer prayer. We come to you, gracious God, praying for ourselves and our community. We pray for the witness of the church that we might live in the gospel. We pray for the global community that we might learn from each other and live in peace. We pray for the needs in our community. We know that you, O oh God, are our provider. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Make us agents of your healing power. We remember those who have died. Help us to comfort those who grieve. We lift up to you the silent prayers we hold in our hearts and our minds this day. We ask all these things for the glory and honor of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. As Christ himself taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We, um, we continue to uh, leave our offering plate in the, in the foyer, in the narthex, Uh, So if you're here and you're able to give, I would encourage you to do so. If you're home and are able to give, uh, you're welcome to send a check to the church, uh, drop one off, have your bank draft to us. So let's just remember, people of God, the Lord has given us so much. We praise the Lord through our gifts for the uplift of God's kingdom. Closing hymn is Stand By Me. It's number 512 in the hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Please rise in body or in spirit as we sing together. study, as we always do, Tuesday nights at 6.30. All of the login information is on our website, on Facebook, or on in the bulletin. Uh, so we are continuing on in Mark. You can read 8 through 10 this week, Mark 8 through 10, and uh, just join us. Even if you have not been there before, we'd love to have you. It's, uh, it's always fun. But beloved, be encouraged in the Lord, and do not be led astray. Stand firm in the witness of the gospel and do good deeds, all for the glory of God. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.